Hey guys, what's up? My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and welcome to the channel where we review sports, fitness, and health related technology. Uh, normally, I'm reviewing fitness trackers because that's the most common form of sports and fitness technology that everyone's using right now. But today we have an interesting couple of products that we're going to be reviewing that are health related. We're going to be reviewing two breathalyzers. Now these aren't the breathalyzers that the uh, police use if they pull you over and suspect that you've been drinking. These are not that quality of, of a test. These are consumer level breathalyzers that can detect the uh, your blood alcohol level based on um, you know what what you're breathing out into these machines. And so we got two of them. We got a $120 uh, main brand breathalyzer called the Backtrack S80. It's a, it's, a, you know, Backtrack is a breathalyzer company. That's all they do. Uh, and they're known for making uh, quality breathalyzers. And then we also have a cheap knockoff, a $20 breathalyzer. And so we're gonna be comparing these two units, a $20 breathalyzer and a $120 breathalyzer and letting you guys know which one is more accurate. Now the way that we're going to be conducting this unscientific test is we're going to be having several individuals coming over, they're going to be drinking, and then they're going to have to wait because you can't blow into one of these units right after you've been drinking because the residual alcohol in your mouth will make you blow an artificially high number. And so that's what we're gonna be doing over the course of about two hours, having individuals drink, take a break from drinking, then blow, and then drink again, and uh, we're gonna record all of the results, what they're drinking and what, they're, uh, what numbers that they're blowing. And uh, we'll let you guys know which ones on an anecdotal level we feel like are uh, the more accurate uh, results, whether it's the cheap $20 version or the more expensive one. So before beginning to actually drink, we went ahead and tested the units to make sure that they were working and showing zeros across the board, showing that we were sober and they were. And so now it was time for round one of drinking. Round one. So Laura began by drinking one and a half ounces of bourbon and then about 20 minutes later blowing a .01 on the backtrack and a .06 on the Vistar, the cheaper version. And so actually based on the charts, she should have been about a .04, so the Vistar actually won that round for her. Now Luke also blew, uh, after drinking uh, two ounces of bourbon, uh, and he blew a .03 on the backtrack and a .06 on the Vistar. Star. And again, based on charts and his his weight, um, you know, he should have blown about a 0.05. So the cheaper version was more accurate for him as well. So across the board for round one, all of us felt that the Vistar was slightly more accurate, although it was showing some somewhat artificially high numbers, but it was more accurate than the backtrack, which was showing kind of low numbers. But the only way we could be sure is if we proceeded to round two. We've been drinking for one hour. I've had eight ounces so far, which is about uh, six drinks. Six to, yeah, depending on how you measure, like six to eight drinks. And I'm a .05 according to the expensive one. Yeah, $120. With, with six to eight drinks. In what, are, what are you on the cheap one? On the cheap one, I'm a .15. I should not legally drive. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> which is probably more accurate. Right. So after eight ounces of bourbon, Dave was showing a .05 on the backtrack and a .15 on the Vistar. And the .05 is just insane. Eight ounces of bourbon, .05. The, the actual number based on the chart should have been about .14. So the Vistar was clearly outperforming uh, the more expensive uh, breathalyzer at this point. Next up is Matt, who by the end of round two had also drank eight ounces of bourbon. And he was blowing a .04 with the backtrack and a .10 with the cheaper Vistar. Uh, and based on his chart, he should have been blowing about a .12 or a .13. So once again, the cheaper version was outperforming the more expensive backtrack. And it was becoming apparent after this round of two things. One, everyone was starting to get just a little bit too happy. And it was clearly time for the final round because I'm yeah, like three times your size. 
By the end of round three, Jason had accumulated two ounces of bourbon and four beers, blowing a .06 on the backtrack and a .15 on the Vistar. So at this point, he should clearly be over the legal limit of driving, uh, but he wasn't at that point yet with the backtrack. Now, according to his chart, he should have been a .13, so the Vistar was clearly more accurate. By the end of round three, Dank had accumulated a total of six beers. He was the only one drinking only beer for the night. So after six beers, he blew a .06 on the backtrack and a .13 on the Vistar. Now, based on his weight and the chart, he should have been blowing much more than the backtrack was saying. The Vistar calculated a .13, which agreed with the chart spot on. So it should be apparent by now that the Vistar was clearly spitting back more accurate numbers. Now, we have an interesting case here with Kmart, who drank four ounces of bourbon and then didn't consume anything else for a full hour. And he spit back some interesting numbers here based on his card. He did go ahead and peek, and then he waited until he blew numbers that actually showed that he had uh, the numbers were falling off and not increasing. So he peaked at a .44 with the backtrack and a .14 with the Vistar. And that was on four uh, based on four ounces of bourbon. So you know the backtrack was saying he was still well under the limit. The other one was saying he was well over the limit. What is your opinion? Uh, whether I don't know if it's more accurate or not, but it gives me better peace of mind because it it might just round up higher. Okay. But based on the number of drinks, I would say yes. More accurate? More accurate. The Chinese version is more uh, more accurate. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> From a pure feel perspective, I'll, I'll the Chinese one is more accurate. Cheers. Cheers. The expensive one, um, so you, the expensive you one says see. that I'm see. like not even barely inebriated. Well, according to the expensive one, I'm still sober. According to the Chinese one, I'm off my ass. So, how do you feel? In between both. Okay. Yeah. I would that's say fair. I would say that I would go with the Chinese one just because of the peace of mind. Because you know I'd rather go high than low. That's a good assessment. Yep. Appreciate that. And so that was the general assessment of the whole group that the backtrack was spitting back numbers that were dangerously low to the point of where you could be two or even three times over the legal driving limit and still the backtrack would show that you were under that limit. And the Vistar might have been a little bit too high, but only mildly so. It seems to be much more accurate and spitting back numbers that were more consistent with what uh, the charts based on weight and gender were showing. So if you're going to pick up one of these, I actually recommend picking picking up the $20 Vistar over the more expensive backtrack. So I definitely encourage you guys to drink in moderation. Definitely don't drink and drive. Be safe and responsible. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.